you know what? Here, take a look at this. What are you doing? What are you doing? I think the battery's dead. There ain't no batteries in it. Give me, give me this. It's a book. Sweetie, let me tell you about a man named Henry Box Brown. See, he was a slave who escaped by mailing himself to Philadelphia in a box. Look at this. Mm-hmm. Here he is right here. Wow, that's crazy. Crazy like a box. <laughs> that's a play on the word. <laughs> now, sweetie, let me put this in perspective. Back in the 1850s, a lot of plantation owners liked to say slaves were happy and well cared for. Well, tell that to the 100,000 of them who risked everything to escape through the Underground Railroad. Now, I know what you're thinking. How do they dig all those underground train tunnels that nobody knows? Yeah. It's a metaphor. It wasn't really a railroad under the ground. It was a network of secret routes and safe houses formed in the early 1800s by abolitionists and other escaped slaves. Like, like the great Harriet Tubman, who made 13 trips to the South to personally free over 70 people. These brave souls gave biblical names to landmarks along the way. The Ohio River was known as the River Jordan, and Canada was the promised land. Yep, tens of thousands of slaves settled in the Great White North, which explains great black folks like Willie O'Ree, the first black player in the NHL, and Drake. But not all slaves used the Underground Railroad. Some went to incredible, ingenious lengths to escape, like Henry Brown. Henry's wife and daughter were sold to another slave owner, and he never saw them again. But he turned that heartbreak into determination to be free by any means necessary. All right. 155 pound cigars bound for Philadelphia. Toss it in the wagon. I can use a little help, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Cigars will be free. What? Why? Something wrong with them? Oh, no, no, no. They're, they're great cigars. And why would they be free? No, you still got to pay for them. That's not free. What is this? Some sort of scam? Forget it. Brown had help from a sympathetic white shoemaker named Samuel Smith. Thank you again. Hey, you're welcome. Hey! You know I'm in here, right? All right, 238 pounds. Bound for Philadelphia. It's fine china, very fragile. Sir, this is the US Postal Service, the finest postal service in the world. I guarantee we will take the utmost care with your package. Would you watch it, doofus? Let me steer it. That was me, sir. Come on. Oof. While he was in the box, Henry wrote down his thoughts in a journal. At the 26 grueling hours, a crate made it to Philadelphia. Henry made it to a group of abolitionists, and when he stepped out of the box, his first words were, How do you do, gentlemen? <laughs> I made it! Finally here! Dang, that's pretty slick. I mean, it was okay. I could have beat it. Oh, really? Are you kidding? I would have popped off a quick joke that would blew Henry's right out the box. Like, for instance, if I had said, Someone gonna sign for this? <laughs> I guess I'm thinking outside the box. <laughs> it is great to be here. <laughs> now, who kicked me down the stairs? <laughs> now, seriously, who did it? Because they need to die tonight. <laughs> Henry's line. He has a certain understated elegance. Well, oh, come on. Those abolitionists were dying in that fake reenactment. I know what I like. Well, anyway, Henry's plan worked, okay? He was a free man, and when word got out, you can imagine what happened. Henry Box Brown was the OG crate escape artist. That's why we're talking about him and not Otis Envelope Evans. <laughs> 